this, this, you see this, this, this has been my day. I hope your day has been better than mine. This has been my day. Since yesterday, I've been trying to upload this video since last night, actually, since when the live stream was cut off, it's been a, it's been a big mess. It's been a big mess for me. Um, but now we're back live. I hope this, this one, now this one that I'm recording actually goes through. That being said, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Tech Chess. I am your host, Steve Nyanumba. A very frustrated Steve Nyanumba, indeed. But today we're going to be very productive. We're going to try as much as we can to be very productive. What do I have in store for you? Well, for starters, I had taken this same application that I had created and actually deployed it online for a particular hotel. So in a hotel situation, we don't really sell inventory or we don't really sell stock but in this situation we usually dispatch it to various departments so in this situation we decided to change departments we decided to change this dispatches we decided to change everything right we decided to change dispatches and departments and also how we're going to run the dispatches and everything else and then something cool that i also added is that if i come in to the dashboard i have this loading stuff all right, this thing for inventory loading. So if I click on this again, you can see it's loading. Yeah, so if it takes some time to actually like load the data, it's going to also still continue loading like that. Uh, the same thing goes for the dispatches. So I'm going to come in here and click on view dispatches. Uh, going to add new dispatch and you can see the loading icon before the actual UI pops up, which is very genuine. It's very, it's very simple to use in this situation. I like it a lot. And, um, you know, in a situation like this, the UI takes some time to load, of course, but then after, after it, after, if you put lazy loading like this or deferred loading like this, then it's going to enable the UI to be much faster in terms of responsiveness. If I go ahead and do payment methods, I can just escape all of that and uh, go ahead and do that. Then there's quotations. I removed invoices because we're not going to be doing invoices again anymore because we're not doing sales. And that's pretty much how you craft out a new entire system out of a pre-existing one. But without that, actually, before we even get into that, I'm going to actually uh, show you guys how far we had reached with the inventory system. So I'm going to come in here and do inventory.test. So now that it's refreshed, you can see that the colors now have popped up. Uh, and we're still having this thing about invoices. So we said we were going to talk about invoices on a very general and very broad perspective. Uh, I finished the invoices tab on the live stream that I did in episode 12. Episode 12 got cut short because of internet issues. Uh, and episode 11 also got cut off because of my own personal fatigue issues. But today we're going to be doing this a bit more energetically, just showing you how invoices is crafted out. So just as a demo, before I show you the code, I'm just going to come in here and view the invoices list. So we have some few invoices over here. All right. This is the sale ID number five. And this is the sale ID of number five, meaning between these two, there's already a payment that has been issued for 41,900 of for 41,900 41, minus 1,900. All right, which is a total of 40,000. So if definitely, if we're going to go into the sales payments, we're going to come in here and view payments. We're going to see one payment for 40,000, which is on sale number five. You guessed it. So if I'm going to come in and say, okay, this sales payment, uh, what's going to be dictating the balance that's remaining on the particular sales that we're talking about, then invoices should not be able to be crafted more than once, right? If they're having the same amount. So let's go back to the invoices list, all right? And then we see how this button over here, this very special button, as you can see, it's not a trash button, it's not a delete button, it's a file PDF. It's like an, it has an Acrobat logo on, the, on that file. So if I click on it, it's supposed to open and down, allow me to download an invoice. And uh, as you can see, we have over here invoice number one, PDF, and then we're going to save and then the moment we save, I'm, I'm going to just click on it to open on the browser. So I'm just going to click on it. And then you can see we have the logo of the company. We have the invoice number. And then we also have the sales 
details so you can see sale number five the customer's name the email the phone number the date when it was generated and even the time 6 27 p.m deliver type delivery type of course i just put it as standard that's very static but this generated by is also quite dynamic then you can see your items the items that are in this particular invoice that is supposed to be paid for so you can see it definitely amounting to this 41900 even if you add this all up you'll get that 41900 you'll get all these quantities multiplied by the pricing the unit pricing and all that stuff and then of course you have this thank you for your business uh, kind of type deal so now we can move on forward and then actually see okay uh, this invoice it's not showing the balance of the particular invoice because, of course, we haven't paid anything yet. So what about this other one? Well, we haven't generated that yet. And uh, if we're going to go and download this invoice number two and uh, see what has been left yet, we can see that we definitely still have the same invoice, the same sales ID, same that, but then the invoice number has changed definitely. So... You can see we have that and we don't have a balance that has been denoted. Okay, so that's what we are going to do in this episode. But first, let's get into the code. Okay, so in the code, we can see that um, we have we, we, there's, there's very many things that we did at first. But the first thing that I'd like you to note is that we imported a package from uh, Barry VDH, uh, Barry VDH's uh, packages, and it's called uh, Laravel DOM PDF. So I'm going to go to my composer.json and I'm going to show you the exact name. It's actually um, in the require side, and then you can see Laravel DOM PDF over here. So this is the name. So when you type composer, you do composer require, and then you type this name over here. All right, so that's for the whole PDF module, crafting it and being able to deliver. Now, what about configuring it? Well, all I did in this situation was I went to my routes, okay? I went to my routes, I went to web.php, uh, web and then I went at the very top, all right? I went to the very, very top, and then I came and imported this use Barry VDH DOM PDF facade PDF. This PDF... Uh, value is what we're going to be using in uh, in in all of this all right it has some functions that just propel us to the next level now we're going to go to the invoices routes in the invoices routes you can be able to see that we have a route over here that we've added called uh, it's, it's a get route going to ID show all right and then the, this is the function all right so this is the function that is crafted out by the show uh, you know the show uh, situation okay so function id and then i'm going to create a variable over here called pdf and then i'm going to load the view of documents invoice where i pass in the data of the invoice itself all right then i come in here and craft out a date this is just for the naming purposes and uh, what i'm going to do is i pass the the created at in this situation over here so ideally i could have just decided to declare a variable called uh, invoice and then put it as invoice find id then i can just come in here take the created that then i come in here and just pass in the invoice itself uh but i didn't do that because it's much easier to just decide to like you know see all the data and see the uh, the, the full-on sources from each and every single piece uh, and then, of course, I did carbon pass, and then I took the created at uh, column, and then I said to date string. Then I say return PDF download, okay? So I did return PDF download, and then I took the date, I concatenated it, I concatenated it with the word invoice, then I concatenated it with the ID, and then, of course, at the end of the day, I'm going to concatenate it with the extension. It's only going to generate PDFs, ladies and gentlemen. It's only going to generate PDFs. Then, of course, I had to name it admin invoices show. So that's exactly what we're going to be using inside the that button uh, that we had already created in the UI. Now, going back to the UI, as you can see, we can go back to uh, creating or generating an invoice. So to generate an invoice, I'm going to come in here and click on add a new invoice. And then I select one invoice. So I can select sale number five again, which has still that balance of 1900, all right? I'll come in here, click on that, save the balance as 1900, then I hit save, 
okay and then you can see an invoice similar to this already exists check invoice number two so it's telling us to check invoice number two because that's the invoice that the balance is the same and the sale id is also the same so you can't craft a, an identical invoice it's not going to happen so now once we go back to the situation where we have uh the balance that has not been crafted yet like sale number 22 for example i'm going to come in here and click save and then it's going to redirect me back here. So we have this one, sale, sale ID is number 22, invoice on the invoice list, it's number five. And then if I come in here and generate that invoice, I'm going to come in here and get my invoice number five. And uh, of course, I'll just come and, download, uh, come and click it and then it's going to show me, of course, because the items were fewer or rather the item descriptions were fewer and the items were also fewer, then it's going to show me that we definitely have this a very, very well dynamic, dynamically crafted. And uh, as you can see, everything is just standard. All right. So we are all good on that department. So now what are we going to do in the basis of, all right, in the basis of clicking that link? Uh, so all we had to do in that situation, I showed you the form. It's very simple. All we just had to do is select the sale ID and then let everything else do its thing. Uh, in terms of balances, the balance is already crafted out in the, in the models themselves. In terms of, uh, you know, getting all the data, you know, we just have to pass in the invoice. And then from that, we link all the data in between models because, of course, the invoices have relationships so we are all good on that particular field how we go about clicking that link it's just as simple as declaring this admin invoices show inside our um, like let's say for example livewire admin invoices index all right and then you know if we go into our into the ui itself we have this button over here for deletion and then we also have this button over here for the show so you can see i did admin invoices show and then i passed in the invoice id and then i did a target blank because i didn't want uh the page to load over the page that i'm currently on i wanted it to load on a separate place then it instigates me to download and then of course we go on and then also i was using the blank for testing purposes there's also a situation where you can use um the views or rather the web.php all right you can use the web.php in this situation in a similar fashion but instead of using a pdf download you can use pdm a pdf stream all right so you can do pdf stream and then uh then at this point all i'm just going to do is delete that save it and then i'm going to come into my view invoices list and all i just need to do is click on this and then it will show me my pdf without actually downloading it. All right, so it will show me my PDF without actually downloading it. And uh, I, I haven't downloaded it yet, it's just crafted. It's going to be crafted the moment I close this, then the crafted version is already gone. I can print it from that point onwards and it's all good. It's all going to be fine and dandy. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, depending on whatever it is that you want to do with your, with your application at this, at this particular point, you're going to be able to do it just based on studying uh, that documentation for uh, DOM PDF for Barry VDH. It's that simple. And that's all I came here to talk about in this 15, 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, that's how, that's how I've created the, the, the invoices structure. So I'm going to come in here and do download because I prefer the download. Uh, because I, I don't like, I don't, I don't know why I prefer the download. I think I think I don't want to click on, on that print button again and then just say print to PDF and just does that. Uh, I'd rather just do this and it's, it's much easier. Now, the next situation or the next thing that we're going to be doing is now the, the quotations. And uh, quotations are pretty simple. It's just like creating a purchase, but then all you're just doing is you're not actually saying that this is a purchase, it's just a quotation. And then you craft out the document itself and uh, send it and that's it all right so that's what we'll be doing in the next live stream this 15 minutes have been purely to explain yeah this 15 minutes have been purely to explain how we have gone about in delivering this particular uh application uh 
invoicing system and uh, how you can do it instantly as well. So that's how uh, we go about that. So I, it, it's not a much, I've not coded at, at all. I've just shown you what it is that I, I have already coded. So yeah, take it as it is, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have learned a lot. This is a short format video. I hope I'll be doing more of these. Um, eventually, I'll start uh, doing more short format content. Maybe the next episode will be a short format content. Uh, but that will be it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys in the next one. Please stay safe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, as always... We are humbled by your presence. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for showing me the support to be able to craft this particular application that's currently in use as well. And uh, yeah, I, I can never ever be any more grateful than I am already because I don't think there's anything else I have to say. It's just amazing that you guys have shown me the support throughout all these different 12, I think 13 live streams now that I have been doing for this particular application. Laravel 10 has been a very interesting walk and uh, the next project that we're going to be doing will be on filament. We'll also be on doing a lot of tailwind stuff and then, and then, this is the thing, this is the kicker. We are going to be using Flutter for applications and then we're going to be using an interlinking HTML, HTTP client between Flutter and the Laravel API backend. So that's going to be fun. I hope you guys are going to be staying tuned. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys learned a lot. That'd be all for today and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Adios and God bless.